Okay, hi, we're back today. So today we're going to be doing end-to-end uh, -end encryption, which means that we're going to be sending uh, an encrypted file and receiving it and then decrypting it. So so end-to-end, 100% -end, uh, encryption. Now, in order for this to work, uh, we're simply going to use our previously written uh, hybrid sender using RSA and AES and then we're just going to make another program which sends and receives uh, the files that we create. So essentially we could just use something like Netcat and we'll demonstrate that as well. Okay so here is uh, the hybrid sender and the hybrid receiver. The only things we've changed in them is that they're going to be using command line arguments. Obviously we don't want to have the files that we're going to encrypt and decrypt uh, hard-coded directly into the code. So just as an overview of what we're going to do we, for the end-to-end -end encryption, we have two people and one of them is the sender. So the sender has uh, this image and that they want to send, or it doesn't have to be an image, it could just be, you know, a file. In this case, we are using an image. But the recipient first has to create their public and private RSA keys. Oops, RSA. Let's fix that. Okay, so then the next step is that they're going to have to send their public key to the sender and once the sender has the public key of the other person then they're going to use that to encrypt their AES key into an encrypted AES key and they're going to then use AES uh, so this was this was RSA and then they're going to create an encrypted file and they're going to also put other things in here at the top right like the the AES key this guy goes at the top of that file and then we're gonna send and also a couple of other things I think like the nonce and the tag because we're using authenticated uh, encryption with EAX and then we're gonna send this whole bundle over and so now the recipient is simply going to decrypt it first they're going to read out the key decrypt it so now they have, they're going to use RSA to do this and then once they have the regular key the, this, this is actually the, um, the AES key then they can take this scrambled image and change it back into the original okay so that's an overview again of what the whole procedure involves and in essentially just this sending part, these arrows, are the networking component to what makes it end-to-end -end encryption. Okay, so here is, on the left-hand side is this hybrid sender. And essentially it's the same file that we had uh, last lesson. We just, we've, we've also imported sys here. And now we're opening sysarg v1. Okay, so sysarg v1 is going to be the public key. And let's see, what else? sysarg v2 is going to be the file to encrypt. And sysarg v3 is going to be the file to send. Now sysarg v3, remember last time we did sysarg v3 as the bundle where we uh, encapsulated the AES key, the nonce, and the tag along with the encrypted data. So uh, yeah, that's all we've done now is we're just using sysarg 
v for command line arguments. And we've done the same thing over here. And in this case, we're going to be decrypting. So we're going to use our private key. So our private key is here, sysargv1 on line 19. And that's our RSA private key. And sysargv2 is the file we're going to decrypt. And so that's here. We're opening that on line 12 for reading. And um, obviously from that, we're going to be the first 256 bytes. You know, we've kind of gone through this before. And finally, um, the last thing is sysargv3 is the file that we're going to create. And that comes down here. Okay, so once again, we're just bundling everything uh, that we're that we're that we're, you know the the encrypted file that we're getting uh, has been bundled, and so we're reading the key, the nonce, the tag for the hash, and then all the data, and then we're finally after we decrypt it, we're putting everything into sysargv3. So that's it. That's that's the uh, encryption decryption part. But what about the network part? Okay, so before we look at the networking, I just wanted to, I just changed something else. I wanted to have a usage line in here. So I put if the length of sysargv is not equal to four, because that's how many things we're uh, going to take, right? Zero, one, so like, you know, zero, one, two, three, and so the length of that is four. So we'll print usage, how to use it, and, and we're going to go sysargv0 here, which is the name of the file we're running in case we change the file name. Uh, in fact, this is not the file name that we're using. Uh, I think we have, uh, we've changed it. So in any case, I've got, I added that, and I've also added this uh, over here to the recipient side. Same, same type of situation, same deal. And so, essentially, now, um, if I exit out of these guys, and I show you, if I go P hybrid, notice the name is different, right? Hybrid recipient EAX. Uh, and so sys, because this is using sysargv. Now it says, okay, you know, didn't work. I, I use sys.exit and I say, uh, this is how to use it. So just to remind the user of what is expected on the command line. So uh, over here, same deal. And if I run this one, it tells me the usage of it as well. So. Now, let's look at the network side of things finally. Okay, so here is uh, my networking code. And on the left, we have the sender. And so the usage of it is specify the host port and the file name as command line arguments. Okay, we've looked at this type of code again. The only thing that's slightly different, uh, sorry, we've looked at this code before where we create a socket. This is TCP, obviously, and we're going to connect to the remote host here. And now we're going to go into, with the file that we open, we're going to go into a, essentially like a, uh, kind of like an infinite loop while we have some data to read from this file that we're sending, which is sysargv3 up from up here. Uh, we're going to go send all on that data, and we're doing it in 4K uh, chunk sizes. And I just chose 4K because, you know, it's a power of two. I thought, well, depending on how big the, the file that we're sending, TCP, I think, has a maximum uh, size of uh, 64K. So this is well under that but I didn't want to make it too big. And also I wanted it to be bigger than just uh, 1K for efficiency. Anyways, 
Um, I'm doing send all here. And so now let's go and look at the receive side. So for the receive side, um, I am again doing you know the usage thing just to make sure uh, a little bit of information for the user and then of course different here is I'm going to bind and listen to the to the to the port on where I'm on the computer that I'm at then we're going to accept which is blocking right and now we're going to go into the same type of loop while we have data that we're reading okay now we're not reading sorry we're we're writing but what we're doing, where we, where's the data coming from? It's coming from the connection. Okay, and notice we're we're reading it in the same uh, chunk sizes as we're sending it. And so now every time we get that 4K, we're going to write it to our file, sysarg v3. Okay, so uh, let's try this thing. Okay, so what is the procedure for doing everything? Let's give it a shot. Okay, so these are the files that we have. On the sender side, we have the image we're going to send, and we have the, the our sending utility, and our uh, encryptor, and a means of getting a file. So we both have send and get utilities that we created. And on the recipient side, we have more, and specifically more because we have the RSA key gen. Now, I've already done this before, and I'm not going to run this again because I, I don't want you to, to come to the conclusion that you have to generate your keys every time you want to send and receive files. No, you only generate your public and private keys once. So essentially, if you've generated your private and public keys, RSA keys, if you delete your private key, which would, which would happen if we uh, overwrite it by running RSA key gen again, now the public keys that you've given everybody are useless. Okay? So I'm not going to run RSA key gen again. I'm simply going to use the ones that I have made previously that generating your RSA uh, key pair is a one-time uh, event, okay? The only time you would want to generate a new private public key pair is if somehow your private key was stolen or if it was compromised, you know, i.e. like uh, you had it on a uh, laptop and the laptop was stolen, something of that nature. However, I will say, that your in this situation my private key right now that's sitting there okay is actually unencrypted this is this is actually not a good idea so y usually what you want to do and this is this is how gpg works right which is a uh, reimplementation of pgp a pretty good privacy or gnu privacy guard for gpg uh, it essentially it encrypts your private key on disk so that even if you're now well, how does it encrypt it well it, it's going to encrypt it with uh, a symmetric encryption so essentially in order to access your private key you're going to have to type in a password to decrypt it that way let's say for example your computer is stolen or something people are still not going to have access to your private key. Because, you see, the, the problem with that is once they have your private key, then any communication that you've done in the past, which has been, uh, let's say, stored, uh, saved and stored, is now compromised. So, so therefore, it's really important to have good privacy on your private key. So, in essence, um, at this point, I'm not doing that, and that's not the purpose of this lesson. Uh, the purpose of this lesson right now is just simply to be able to do end-to-end -end encryption. And so our next step is the first step in end-to-end -end encryption, and that is somehow this sender over here 
has to get their hands on the public key of the recipient. So therefore, why don't we now run the get key? So we'll go Python, get file, and uh, so remember, what was the command line arguments? Well, we just have to run it. And OK, so we forgot to <laughs> edit the, the get file. So we copied them over to the right places. So we've got the right files now. And so again, if I try going uh, to run the, the get file without the correct arguments, it pr prints the correct usage for me. So that's how I'm going to use it. So I have to go p is just alias for Python 3. And now I'm going to go get file, now the host. I'm going to do uh, localhost. And the port, I'll do 4444. And the file name, well, I'll call that rpub.pem. Now I can't run this, OK? Uh, or can it wait? Uh, yeah, this is the get. So this is the server. And so I'm, I'm actually, even though this says sender here, okay, if you think about it for a minute, this does say sender, but before this person sends, first they need to get the public key of the, of the other person before they can encrypt and send. So we're going to run this, and we just hit enter, and now it's blocking, okay? And it's blocking because it's waiting for a connection. Okay, so now on the other side, we're going to have to send them the public key before the, the sender can actually start to encrypt. So, so therefore, we're going to go Python send file, and what was the command line usage? Okay, so send file, and now the host, local host, and the port. Again, we'll, see, we'll use the same port, right? We have to. And then the file name we're going to send is public pem. So now when we hit this here, when I hit enter right here, this should return. And it does. OK, so now what do we have on the sender side? OK, great. We've got the public key. And um, fantastic. OK, so now, now that we have the public key of this guy, we can now start the encryption process over here. So why don't we do that? So this is the hybrid send. And let's see, what were the command line arguments for this? It is Python 3. OK, so we'll go Python. And, and then it's uh, hybrid sender. Yep. And next thing is the public key. Now that one is right here, rpubpem rpub.pem. And then uh, what's next? The next thing that has to come in there is the file to encrypt. So that's going to be tux, png, okay, the image. And then uh, the file to send. Okay, so we'll call it bundle. Okay, done. Now when we hit enter, no networking going on here, but now we should have a file called bundle. And we do. OK? So notice we didn't have a file called bundle before, but now we have this bundle. Now we're going to send this bundle to the other side. OK? So now comes the networking part. Now in order to send the networking part, we're going to have to get this person over here to run the receive a file using the networking we wrote. So we'll go get file. And host again, can't type, local host and port. We'll just use the same port. And um, remember about the ports, OK? You can't use anything on Linux. And this is a good idea for any system. You can't use anything lower than 1024, which are privileged. And also, uh, they go as high as, I think, 65,000. So nothing above that, um, approximately. Anyway, so now after the port, we have to specify the file name. So uh, let's call it secret. 
Okay, so we're gonna get this file called secret. So we're gonna hit it. Now this is blocking, waiting for the remote connection. Now over here, we're gonna go uh, Python, and now we're gonna send the file and localhost port 4444, and now we're gonna send bundle, which is what we just created. And now when I hit it, great. It gets, this site is now returned. We now have seek the secret file over here. Now this is encrypted, so we are gonna have to decrypt this file. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's our recipient, right? And how do we do this one again? Well, first we're gonna have our private key as the first argument, you see that, okay, of the usage line. And that is called private pen. And the next thing is the file to decrypt, which is called secret. And the last thing is uh, the file name to create. And we'll call it, um, we'll call it my file. Or maybe we'll call it, uh, how about we'll call it something like, uh, well, perhaps you don't know that it, it's a picture, but let's just say we know it's a picture, but perhaps we don't even know the image type. Let's just say picture here, ready? Okay, done. So we've decrypted it. And so now if we take a look at the files we have, picture is what's been decrypted. Now, the question now is, is this a JPEG? Is this a PNG? Uh, is this a bitmap? What kind of an image is this? So if I go file, which is a Unix or a Linux utility, you can just type in a command line argument for it, and voila, it says that it's a PNG image. It even says how big it is. So therefore, I will rename it to picture.png. And so now I can finally open the file with an image viewer, and voila, our image is revealed. So this is pretty cool because we have now accomplished end-to-end -end encryption, the holy grail of encryption. So uh, now, regarding the networking, we could have used a, we didn't have to write our own networking uh, code for this. We could have actually used a, a different uh, tool for this that's actually pre-built. Okay, so the pre-built tool that I was mentioning is Netcat. So if we go man nc for the manual page in Linux, it's uh, arbitrary TCP and UDP connections and listens. So Netcat is a utility there you go, there's a description of it. Basically, you can send and receive files with it. You can do other things too, but um, for us, our purposes, we're gonna go netcat verbose, and we're gonna listen, and we're gonna listen on port 4444, and we are, uh, actually, this this will work if it's a, this will work if you're getting, if you're going to be listening from a remote actual computer. But because we are going to be using localhost, I actually have to specify the uh, IP address like this. And 127.0.0.1 is the IP address of localhost. Now, once I do that, uh, I'm going to have to redirect whatever comes in to a file. So I could go rpub.pem. And so now when I hit this, it says listening. And so now when I go to the other side and I've got my public key, now I can use netcat to send it. Now I'm going to use dash n to close the connection after the file is sent. And so I'm going to be providing the same uh, arguments for the host. 
and the port. And this time, I'm going to redirect it input into it, not output. So in the, over here, right, this kind of like right arrow is redirecting output to a file. This one I'm redirecting input from a file. And this is going to be my public file. So now my public uh, key. So once I hit enter here, you should see this one return. And it does. So now uh, I've got the file. And if you'll notice, OK, there we go. So this was received at 1424. And that's the time right now, 1424. So that's one way. That's another way to send and receive files using Netcat. We didn't actually have to write our own networking code in Python, but it doesn't hurt. So I just wanted to also uh, show you that option as well. So obviously, you would provide your own. Uh, now, for the server side, you can omit this. Okay, you can just put 4444 four, 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 and it'll actually bind to uh, 0, 0, 0. So if you watch here, notice if I was to omit that, notice up here it said listening on 127001, which is localhost. Notice if I hit this now, notice it's listening on 000, zero, zero which is uh, is which is connect which is binding to my Ethernet uh, device. So therefore, this would work if I was actually sending from a different computer. And obviously, here on the on the sender side, I would have to type in the IP address of the server or those the computer that's listening. Okay. So essentially, all you really need for end-to-end -end encryption is to decide on, you know, the the receiver. You need to know each other's IP addresses, decide upon a port, and then and then it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so that was uh, a lesson on end-to-end -end encryption. Hope you enjoyed it.